They say that a man with a watch always knows exactly what time it is, but a man with two watches is never sure. I want to talk to you about how to estimate uncertainty in measurements when you're taking multiple measurements of what should essentially be the same physical quantity. So in particular, I'm going to pretend that I've taken my Acme gravitational field detection device and used it 10 times to come up with these 10 estimates, uh, 10 measurements of the Earth's gravitational acceleration. And I want to know what the best estimate for the actual gravitational acceleration of the Earth is given this data. This is an important tool to have in, when you're doing science because you want to be able to talk about what your actual values are. But equally important, philosophical aside, is being able to say how much you trust your values. In my opinion, one of the key differences between scientific data and just people claiming things are true is that scientists will tell you not only an estimate of what uh, their best guess at what the answer to some question is, but they'll tell you as best they can how much you can trust that and under what circumstances. That's what science is all about, is making testable predictions where you say not just it's pretty much this, but here's exactly how much faith I have in this result. Uh, as an aside for the experts out there, I'm going to be simplifying things enormously, like physicists often do, by assuming that any, uh, any errors in this measurement process that I make are independent, random, and normally distributed errors, which probably means nothing to, be to beginners out there, but they're simplifying assumptions that make things easier. Uh, in particular, that means that if I have twisted a knob here and miscalibrated my gravitational field sensor so that all these readings are 0.82 high or something, that's not accounted for in the uncertainties they talk about here. We're going to assume that we've done our best to eliminate systematic uncertainties so that only the random ones are left. We want to figure out how to do that. So the best estimate for the gravitational field is exactly what you would think. The best estimate is the mean of these 10 values. The mean is just the average, the ordinary average, add up all the numbers, divide by 10. And the mean, when I calculated this earlier, is 9.7910, 9.7910 meters per second squared as units, obviously. Obviously, I could keep as many digits as I wanted there, but there's a question, you know, there are rules out there for how many digits do I keep. Those are silly rules. We're going to learn the real way to do this using uncertainties. So, that's the mean. That's my best estimate for the gravitational field strength here. How do I estimate my confidence in this? Well, it has something to do with how spread out these values are. And the first step to figuring out how, what their spread is, is to calculate the standard deviation of the values. So to calculate the uncertainty, what I need to do is calculate standard deviation. And in particular, I'm not going to do this by hand. That's a miserable, ridiculous thing to do. We're going to do this in a, instead using a calculator, using maybe Microsoft Excel or some other spreadsheet program. Uh, if you're using a spreadsheet, what you want to use, there are two ways of defining standard deviation. This is when we're just taking a sample. We could take as many data points as we wanted to and get more and more data. So we are, there's no sense that we're taking all the possible data. This is a sample standard deviation. And there's also something called a population standard deviation. If you've, taken, if you've measured the weight of all 87 giant squid in your aquarium, that then the, stand, the spread of that you can measure the population standard deviation because you know all 87 weights. If you only measure the weight of six of the giant squids, then you, that's a sample of the squids and you, you use that. So we're going to use the sample standard deviation. That's essentially always the one you want in physics. Uh, if you're using Excel, you would use the Excel function stdev.s is the function you would use, s for sample, not stdev.p. Uh, if you leave out the dot s, it does the right thing, but this is the new notation to make sure you have the right, right function. So okay, standard deviation. It, when I do that calculation, I'm not going to go through how to do it, but when I do that calculation, I come up with, uh, when I did that, I got 0 0.0825, 0 0.0825 uh, standard deviation, roughly speaking, that means that, again, normally distri distributed uncertainty, that means that uh, roughly two-thirds of these data points should be within 0.08 of the mean. 
So between 9.72 and 9.87, about two-thirds of the data, so about six data points, seven data points, should be in that range. And that's pretty close, at least. So, okay, that's my, that, that's my standard deviation. That's an estimate of how spread out my data is. But it's actually an overestimate of my confidence in this mean value. For the mean value, what I actually want is to calculate the standard deviation of the mean. Um, standard deviation of the mean is the um, a standard deviation, sample standard deviation is typically written as S, the standard deviation. The standard deviation of the mean uh, is given by s divided by the square root of n, where I've got n data points. So that's 0 0.0825. Oh my goodness, I left up my units. Meters per second squared. Always include the units in your values. So I've got that meters per second squared divided by the square root of, I had 10 data points, that's my n. So divide by the square root of 10. And what I get from this is uh, 0 0.0261. 0 0.0261 meters per second squared. Again, it's got units. That is my uncertainty in my mean. The, uh, the standard deviation of the mean is my uncertainty in my, in my mean value. Uh, if I were to do the same measurement a bunch of times, the mean would have a standard deviation of this much uh, in principle. That's my best estimate, at least, for the standard deviation of the mean. So uh, if I were going to report this then, if I wanted to report my results, I would say, yes, my best estimate is that g, I report it in the form g plus or minus delta g. That's a lowercase Greek delta that I've written. g plus or minus delta g is equal to 9.7910 meters per second squared plus or minus 0 0.0261 meters per second squared. That's almost my final number that I'm going to report. The one thing that's left, the one thing I haven't done, is this is way too many significant digits. Now that I look at it, you can see I'm already uncertain at the 0.02 or 0.03 level. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to round off this uncertainty to one or maybe two significant digits. Uh, if you rounded this to 0.03, meters per second squared, that would be fine by me, that's great. If instead, but for me, uh, I, I like to keep two significant digits in my uncertainty any time that the first digit is a one or a two or maybe a three. So I'm going to write this as plus or minus 0 0.026 meters per second squared. But again, if you wrote 0 0.03 meters per second squared, that's fine by me too. Your G then we're just going to keep as many digits in G as we need to match the digits in my uncertainty. That's all we do. And so that is three digits past the decimal point. 9.791 meters per second squared, plus or minus 0 0.026. And that is my scientifically reasonable way of reporting the uncertainty, delta G, in my measured value G the best estimate of the value, and how confident I am in that value. Again, uh, what I would say is, conceptually, this is one standard deviation of the mean. So I would say, again, assuming normally distributed error, I would say that I, I expect that the true value is within plus or minus two standard deviations 95% of the time. That's two standard deviations plus or minus is a 95% confidence level. So usually I'd say but this is about quarter, so about 0.05-ish, so 9.74 through 9.84 will be about the range I would expect the real value of G to be in, given this data. This is how I report it. That's my mean and standard deviation of the mean, my mean and uncertainty, and that's how you estimate uncertainties. The last thing I'll put in here, just so you have it, this is called an absolute uncertainty because it has the same units as the base quantity. It's an absolute difference in that base quantity, the absolute measurement of that base quantity. A lot of times it's reasonable to get a sense of how accurate some measurement is to ask about the relative uncertainty. 
relative uncertainty, relative error, relative uncertainty, is given by just the ratio of my uncertainty in G, delta G, divided by G itself. It's just that ratio, and if you look at it, uh, when, I, when I work this out, uh, I get that this is, well, this is 0 0.261 divided by, don't, don't use the rounded off versions, use the extra sig figs. Uh, I get 0 0.0261 meters per second squared divided by 9.791 meters per second squared. When I take that ratio, this comes out to be, it's unitless, because the units cancel out in any, in any relative uncertainty. This comes out to be about, that's almost 10, right? About 0 0.00266 with no units. That's my value. And I often write that as 0.27%. Relative uncertainty is often expressed as a percent uncertainty, a percent error. And so that's what I would come up with. And point really, something like 0.3%. That's pretty good in a lot of circumstances. That's not half bad. So this variation I'm seeing here looks kind of painful, but really 0.3% pretty reasonable and by in, in for a lot of uses, for a lot of purposes. So again, this is my, uh, I'll say though, whatever you put in your, as your percent error here, as your relative error, even if you report relative error instead of absolute, it's the digits in the absolute error that tell you how many sig figs to keep in your, in your measured quantity, in your base quantity. So always do this first, and then if you want to report a relative uncertainty, do that too, and uh, you can do it in that form. So there you have it. That's how you take a set of measurements of the same quantity and figure out what value and uncertainty to report for that set of measurements. You take the mean to find the best estimate, and then you take the standard deviation, divide by square root of n, to get the standard deviation of the mean to find your actual value. Oh, and one last comment just for kicks. Uh, you can see that I can keep taking more data to make my standard deviation of the mean better and better because I'm going to divide by square root of n, which is awesome, but it is a sort of point of diminishing returns. To get this down by another, to, to make this a factor of, if, to make it 0 0.027 instead of 0.27%, for example, to, to make that an extra factor there, I would need to take 100 times as much data, so 1,000 data points, just to move this decimal place by one space. The best estimate I, advice I've heard is, call it, I don't know, uh, five measurements gives you a square root of n that's pretty worthwhile. Going up to 10, maybe, but going up to 20, not that big of a payoff. So five to 10 measurements of the same quantity will usually get you most of the way to a decent uncertainty, unless you're really trying to get a fantastic thing. Honestly, when I get much more than five or 10 data points, I start worrying that there are systematic errors I haven't accounted for uh, more than the random error being the dominant thing in that case. So eh, take five to 10 data points and call it good. With that, that's all I want to tell you about how to estimate uncertainty in a set of measurements.